Greetings, New Dawn family, and welcome to 2024. I hope you had a very great festive season, and I hope you are recharged and ready for this year. This year is going to be a very interesting year, but with God, all things are possible. Now, tonight, I'll be talking about killing King Stomach, especially given the fact that most churches, especially this time, they engage in a corporate fast. Welcome to New Dawn Ministries TV. So tonight I want to talk to you about the importance of killing King's stomach, especially when you engage in fasting. There's a couple of verses that I want to read to you where I believe the Holy Spirit will speak to you as much as he has spoken to me. If you go with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24 and verse 25, um, we will read those two verses and then we will jump and read verse 28 to verse 29. And it reads as follows. Some time later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. Let's jump to verse 28. It says here, Then he asked her, what, What's the matter? She answered, This woman said to me, Give up your son so we may eat him today. And tomorrow we will eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him the next day I said to her, give up your son so we may eat him, but she had hidden him. Amen. A very interesting verse that we just uh, 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 read. It's about Samaria, which was fortified. But then the king came, a foreign king. The Bible says the king of Aram. So the king of Aram arrived and he laid siege on the city of Samaria. So no one was allowed to go out, no one was allowed to come in. And the siege lasted for a long time to a point whereby the, the Samaritans inside, they began to starve. And when they began to starve, the Bible then jumps onto the story of the two women. And these women, they both had sons. But then one woman said to one to the other woman, let's eat your son and tomorrow we will eat my son. So the other woman agreed. They killed the son. They ate the son because there was a great famine in Samaria. But then the next day, the other woman now who had the son, she needed to also offer her son to be killed so that they, she can be eaten. But then she ran away. And we read the story here where the king of um, 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 Samaria, he comes and hears the story and he becomes grieved because he realized that these women, they've eaten a person, cannibalism. And when I read this story, it really shook me because it shows me what a person is capable of doing, giving hunger. You know, hunger can drive you to a point whereby you are even capable of killing your own son or daughter and eating them for the sake of satisfying the cravings of the stomach. And I realized something concerning this verse. I realized that the stomach is a very important component in our life that needs to be killed. Hence the importance of fasting. When you are fasting, you are subjecting the cravings of the stomach under the cravings or the power of the spirit. You know, the stomach, if you don't keep check, you will find that you will do certain things. You will compromise your own integrity so that you can satisfy the need of the stomach. A stomach is a very co important component in a human life. Here are two women. They went against their natural instinct. You know, the instinct of every mother is to protect their children. 
But because they were driven by hunger because of the siege, they went on to kill their own baby and they ate the baby up. Hallelujah. And when I read this, I realized the Holy Spirit was just showing me that it is, imp it is important to understand that when there's a declaration of a fast, especially at the beginning of the year, take part in that fast. Because in the process of fasting, you are killing the power and the, and the, and the, and the, and the manipulation of the stomach. Because many people have eaten the fruit of their womb on the altar of satisfying the hunger of their stomach. Let me repeat that. Many people have eaten the fruit of their womb on the altar of satisfying the cravings of their stomach. So if you don't take care of the cravings of the stomach, you might find that in later, in, in, in later on in your life, you might eat the very thing that you're supposed to protect and to, to invest in, in, which is the fruit of your womb. Hence the importance of fasting. Hallelujah. And when you read here, it says sometime later, Ben-Hadad, the king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid a siege to Samaria. So I'm realizing that all of us in life, we will be uh, subjected to situations whereby there's a siege. And this siege can present itself in the form of a financial pressure. It can present itself in the form of sickness. It can, it can present itself in many forms. But its aim is to cut a life source, is to drive you into hunger so that you make certain decisions on the basis of hunger. And that is not right because what that does, it disconnects you with God altogether. Look at Esau and Jacob. Esau went on to hunt. He came back hungry. And um, that's Esau. And Jacob, he's at home and he had prepared a bowl of soup. And Esau comes and he says to his brother, I'm hungry. Please give me something to eat. And he sees the bowl of soup. But then Jacob says to him, before I can give you, please sell me your birthright. And Esau, under the pressure of the cravings of the stomach, he puts on a silver platter his birthright. He says, what will the birthright do to me right now? I am starving. He says, it's fine. You are the firstborn. He announced it with his mouth and he sold his birthright so that he can satisfy the cravings of the stomach. And as soon as he did that, I can tell you right now, there was a shift in the spiritual realm because a recognition of the blessing that was meant to go to the firstborn had already now shifted into the secondborn because the secondborn recognized the importance of are, are, are subjecting the cravings of the stomach under the will of the spirit. And by the time Isaac blessed his children, he blessed Jacob as a firstborn son and he released all the blessings. And let me tell you, the transaction had already happened when Esau, under the pressure of the cravings of the stomach, he sold his birthright. The importance of ensuring that we keep the cravings of the stomach under the check is extremely important. Hallelujah. Now, I've written a couple of things here which I want to discuss with you concerning fasting. When a church pronounce a season of fasting they might say it's two weeks it's three weeks it does not necessarily mean you need to be fasting three weeks consecutively you know it 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 simply means it's a declaration of a season of fasting and i realized something interesting about fasting fasting is not a sprint it's a marathon but it's a marathon that is uniquely that is unique to a person so some people, they've got grace, they can fast 21 days, some can fast 40 days, some can fast one day, some can fast three days, some can fast five days. It just depends on your, on your spiritual capacity. But I want to say this to you, when you pray to ask God to give you grace to fast, always listen to the number of days and the type of fast that the Holy Spirit is instructing you to do within the season of fasting that has been declared. Some people can say, you know what, I will fast three weeks, 
but it will be a Daniel fast, for instance, you know. Um, some will say, you know what, I'll go for three weeks, it will be a dry fast, meaning no meals, nothing at all except drinking water. Some people might say, you know what, it's 21 days. In this 21 days, I will skip um, um, breakfast and lunch. I'll just eat dinner, you know. So there are different types in how you can package the fasting. But all of those decisions, they are in proportion with the capacity of the faith that you have. So it is important not to compare yourself to other people. Is for you to allow God to challenge you in terms of the number of days that you need to fast. Now, if you if you sense that the Holy Spirit is giving you three days to fast, push to fast for those three days. And let me say this, after you fasted one day or second day, there will be a temptation to break your fast. You'll get a headache, you'll get a temptation to eat, you'll get all sorts of things. But remember, the Holy Spirit had given you a target try by all means to stick to that target as far as practically as possible and let me be the first one to admit it we all have done it where we said okay i'll fast for seven days after five days you realize you're too hungry you run to the fridge you eat and you break your fast it does happen and it has happened even to me but the key is not to condemn yourself the key is to understand that maybe seven days is not really your capacity. Maybe you were too ambitious. Maybe you did not listen properly to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, all you need to do is to repent, is to strengthen yourself, is to trust God for the next round of fasting, and is to be realistic and to understand that you will grow in fasting for many days. Because remember, a fasting is an activity between you and God. No one should keep track on how much you have fasted. Hallelujah. Now, as much as it is important to keep to the commitment that you've given yourself um, um, from the Holy Spirit, also do understand that if you break your fast before the given time, it is also an indicator to you and me in terms of our spiritual strength. So if you plan to fast for five days and after three days you break your fast and it, is, it, was, it was not your desire or your plan, understand that it's an indicator and it's a good indicator. It shows you that your stomach still has some cravings that are overshadowing the spiritual desire. So fasting also serves as a test for yourself before the trial of the enemy. In other words, it's a safe space for you to test yourself if you can um, um, persevere through the resolution that you have made before God. And if you break your fast before time, it's a very strong indicator that your flesh, your flesh or your stomach, the cravings are above your spiritual desire. Hallelujah. I want to also say... Um, in, 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 in conclusion, how you conclude your fast, it is also very important. You know, some people, including myself, I, I did it. You fast for five days and after you've broken your fast, you go and you eat and you eat everything you can find because you're trying to feel, you know, the hunger that you have. Now, I want to say this, how you conclude your fast it's a strong indication on how well you've conducted your fast. If you go out there and eat everything that you can find after you've broken your fast, it might mean that you really did not um, allow the process of fasting to, 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 to process you, you know? So when you break your fast, don't go all out. Just restrain yourself and try to break your fast in an orderly manner so that you don't outdo the work of the fast that you've done. So I've seen it with myself. If I'm breaking fast and all of a sudden I'm going for all sorts of type of food, I eat, I fill my stomach to the fullest, then I have conducted that fast as a religious um, 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 uh, 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 manner without acknowledging that the fast is meant to break the cravings, is meant to break the 
cravings of the stomach is, is meant to break the desires of the flesh. So it is important to always uh, 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 monitor how you break your fast. Hallelujah. I hope you've picked up something in this teaching and I hope you will participate. If there's a declaration of a fast, please do participate and trust God. Um, um, and also remember that fasting can be something that you initiate yourself as well. You don't have to wait for a church. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the teaching. And I pray God that we'll have strong resolution. We will embrace a lifestyle of fasting so that we can ensure that the cravings of our stomach will be killed so that we don't compromise our integrity or sell our birthright or eat the fruits of our wombs. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's connect again. This is newdawnministries.tv. We exist to equip, to inspire, and enable everyone.